Delaney, and I am the Director of Industry and Innovation uh, here at the Freedom Center. We are a Power Systems and Power Electronics Research Center headquartered at NC State University. Our research projects span renewable energy integration, electric vehicle technologies, control techniques, microgrids, applications of wide band gap semiconductors, and traditional power systems analysis. We have extensive lab capabilities, including multiple simulation labs for HIL development, an electronics packaging lab, and a high bay lab for evaluating medium voltage applications up to 15 kV AC input. Together with our industry partners, we are leading the electrification revolution. Hopefully, everyone is familiar with Zoom. We have disabled audio and video for all participants today, but we ask that you use the chat feature to ask questions. Just as a reminder, you can hover your mouse over the Zoom window and the button should appear at the bottom of that window. Click chat, type your question, and we'll answer as many as we can. Note that this webinar is being recorded and will be posted to the YouTube channel for the Department of Electrical and Computer Engineering at NC State um, as soon as we can uh, get it uploaded. So Freedom conducts some amazing research, uh, but our students and postdocs are even more amazing. So I'm gonna turn things over to our presenter today. Fu Hong. Thank you, Ken. Good morning, everyone. Thank you all for being here. My name is Fu Hongqi. I'm a five years PhD student at North Carolina State University. Today, I'm gonna to discuss about my oral research work for battery model uh, parameter estimation. This is a joint work with my professor Dr. Ning Lu and Dr. Qian Long and Hui Yu. This work has been accepted by IEEE Transactional North Margaret. So if you, you are interested in my presentation, I welcome you to download my paper and take a look for it. Thank you. And my research effort was mainly focused on the microgrid application. A microgrid is a localized grid of different energy source and load. And the microgrid can, can, be, can be operated with when connected to the grid or island from the grid, but no matter in which case, the battery will be a, the main, main backup source for the microgrid system. So that, that's why the modeling for battery system is really important. In today's presentation, I will going to talk about the motivation and consideration for my, for my research and the methodology for battery, for battery modeling and the approach for the model parameterization. I will also show some case study and I will summarize my presentation. Here is the motivation for our research and why we are favored in hardware in the loop simulation. There are two ways to develop different type system for microgrid system. One is called software in the loop or called model in the loop. Generally, for software in the loop simulation, the researcher can design or design a system or different control scheme in different software and design the control algorithm in any platform or language. For example, we can develop a test feeder on the open, on the open DSS, and then we can design some VOVAR control algorithm in Python or other, other control language, something like that. Then this control engine can coordinate different software together to perform the control scheme. The other method is called hardware in the loop simulation. For this method, we still need to develop different model. But the advantage for hardware in the loop simulation is that first, you can coordinate different test systems together automatically. For example, we can develop a uh, distribution feeder model and also some detailed inverter model together. The hardware in the loop system can, can automatically connect them together and to, to, to perform interaction between different test systems. The second advantage is because everything in hardware in the loop simulation can be run in real time, even faster than real time or slower than real time, so that the model itself can interact with other hardware. The third advantage for Hardware loop simulation is the implementation of different communication protocol, such as CAN bus, mode bus, and even other protocol. So that's why we put more favor in in the hardware loop sim. In the, that's why we put more favor in the hardware loop simulation. We try to develop the whole microgrid model in hardware loop simulation, and using this model to test different EMS control algorithm or different control control framework for 
this microgrid model. And for the modeling consideration, the first thing we need to consider is the data availability. We are work with a company called Total so that we can know the, the uh, data shift for the equipment implement in the field. We also have some field measurements for the battery system, such as the low current, the terminal voltage, the state of charge, the environmental temperature, and also the battery bank temperature. So that we're trying to develop, we're trying to use the low current and the arbin temperature as the input for the battery model. We will lay this model to produce simulation result for terminal voltage, state of charge, cell temperature, so that our modeling objective is try to minimize the mismatch between the simulation output and the fuel, fuel measurement. Moreover, because we are doing some, we are doing the hardware loop simulation, we also want to, we also want the model can capture some dynamics of the battery system, such as the voltage change, voltage change or the SOS change. So this goes to our battery model. There are two parts of our battery model. The first part is called electrical means branch circuit model. This model is a uh, is a equivalent circuit based model, and the function for this uh, for this equivalent circuit model is threefold. The first one is we're using we are using this equivalent circuit uh, equivalent circuit so that we can simulate the terminal voltage for SOC. The second function is we use we use a coolant counter so that we can estimate the battery state of charge. The third one is we will collect the heat loss over the internal internal heat loss. In here, we're using PR to represent heat loss, and we will use this P internal heat loss to calculate the battery internal cell temperature. Here is our, our second part for the battery model. We call it thermodynamic branch circuit. The function for this circuit is to calculate the battery cell temperature. We're using an equivalent RCD circuit to represent the thermal model. When we calculate the internal heat loss, which is PR from the internal impedance, we're using this RCD circuit to calculate cell temperature. And furthermore, we're using this cell temperature, which is T here, to update the state of charge and the internal voltage. This is the connection and the configuration for our battery model. It's pretty, um, which is pretty simple. We revise this model so that we can apply this model to different uh, to different uh, battery type. We show you in the case study. So here is some take home message for the battery modeling. The first, because we are doing hardware in the loop stimulation and the time step is down to a few microseconds, so that we need the battery model to be simple enough to be executed in the real time. There could be other models such as computational fluid dynamics model, which is based on differential function, but it's too, compli too complicated for us to be run in a few microseconds. The second, the second take home message is, we also want the battery model can produce some detailed changing of the model because the battery model will connect to an inverter and we need to simulate the system dynamics. And this equivalent circuit model can provide us, provide us such dynamics. So that's why we choose this equivalent circuit model. And then we go to the model parameterization method. So we first just recap the objective for our model. The objective is we try to minimize the, uh, the sim minimize the mismatch between the simulation output and the field measurement. So that we just formulate the objective function as the we we sum we summation of the difference, the first the first equation is the f theta. The f theta here represents the mismatch between the simulation output and the field measurement. The simulation output is a function of a theta. Theta here represents the battery model parameter, and because a model could have multiple um, parameter, so the theta here represents a one by n vector. The second, second part is the weighting factor for different measurement. In our case, we have three different uh, measurements, so that we have three different weighting factor. The reason why here we submit all the, we require all the weighting factor as one is we try to normalize the, normalize the uh, mismatch, but, but in general case, there shouldn't, uh, there could be any value, but it just 
uh, represents different exercise for the measurement. The last one is the constraint for the model parameter. Some parameter we have we have some bound. For example, the capacity for a battery cell should be a positive number. So that that's why we put some constraint here for the model parameter. And because the parameter is a one by n vector, the lower bound and upper bound is also a one by n vector. This is our objective form, objective function formulation. And then we go to the parameter estimation method. We try to propose a hybrid method by combining by combining a heuristic approach and deterministic approach. In the in the here we shows our objective function and for uh, for heuristic uh, for heuristic uh, approach they are mainly based on some stochastic approach. So they could have a very good searching efficiency for the whole solution space. However, if the solution space have multiple peak or multiple value, such a heuristic always could be very, could need a very long time before you reach to a stable value. So that's why we try to combat this heuristic algorithm with a deterministic algorithm. Deterministic algorithm includes uh, uh, Gauss-Newton method or, uh, uh, or Levenberg McCreta method. They are they are kind of uh, they are kind of um, objective. Uh, 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 they are kind of a uh, Jacobi-based method, and such a method is highly depending on the initial value. So that we try to using this heuristic algorithm to provide a good initial point for this deterministic algorithm, and then once this deterministic algorithm find a good local optima, we will just feedback this local optima to the heuristic algorithm and let this heuristic algorithm to search the whole whole solution space again. And after a couple iteration, we hopefully we can hopefully we can find a global optima for the for the problem we try to formulate. And we'll, I will show a step-by-step -step example in the later slides. For our case, the genetic uh, the genetic algorithm is select as the gen, uh, as the global searching algorithm. I know in the literature People are are favor in uh, in favor are in favor with the uh, particle swarm optimization method, but our case we try to modify the genetic algorithm so that you can have a better searching performance than the particle swarming optimization method. Here is an example for the genetic algorithm. We will create the random specimen in the in the very beginning. The specimen here represents the represents the parameter set for the battery model, then we will calculate the performance, which will be the objective function for each parameter set. Then we will generate the new parameter set based on the old, old population, and then we will mutate some of them, and then we will find the best uh, parameter set again. For the local searching, which is a deterministic approach, we're using trust region reflective algorithm. The reason why we choose this method is because the battery parameter is limited by his bound. So for other projects such as Gauss and Newton, they are for unconstrained problem. So that's why we don't, can trust only using the trust region approach. Here is the, our method. So for original objective function, we try to rewrite it as a uh, polynomial equation based on the tail extension expansion and then you can see because theta zero here represents the initial point for the parameter set and delta the lower cap delta here represents the update trial step for each parameter set so for this uh, for this quadratic equation the first thing is kind of a fixed number so as long as we can find the minimum number for the last two terms we can find the equivalent minimums for this uh, quadratic function and the objective function. For this second term and third term, we formulate the equivalent subproblem, uh, sub uh, trust region subproblem of the original problem. J matrix here represents the J system Jacobi matrix, and H here represents the system Hazen matrix. The C matrix here is a is the correction matrix, so that we can make sure the summation of these two matrices is a reversible, which means it's a Possibly definite. And here I will show you a step by step example for our algorithm. In the very beginning, we define the size of population is six. 
That means for genetic algorithm, there are six different parameter set for the Barrett battery model. And step one means we need to generate, generate new population from the old population. Here is an example. We first define the fitness function for each parameter set. And because we have the original objective function, we define the fitness function as the reverse of the objective function. So for example, if a parameter set have very good matching performance, the objective function could be a very low number, very small number. So the associated fitness function could be a larger number. We also define the selection possibility for each parameter set based on the fitness function. If a parameter set have a very good match performance, the fitness will be a larger number, so that the selection possibility will be a larger number. So if at the iteration k, we have the population, which is, is, uh, after, which is cal it's calculated by the genetic algorithm and the deterministic algorithm, so that we will calculate the fitness for each parameter set. And based on the selection possibility, we will generate the new population at next iteration. This is the first step for the genetic algorithm. The second step is called mutation. Because we just generate the new population for the genetic algorithm, we will calculate the fitness for all of them. As an example shown here, C5, C4, and C1 has the poor performance compared to others. So we will just pick these three parameter set for mutation. For the mutation, we will take the nth parameter as an example. But this mutation scheme will be performed for all parameters. So for, the, for this three set, we pick the nth parameter. For this, the, this uh, parameter, he has orig he originally he has a lower boundary and an upper boundary. And for this three set, this parameter will have three different value. We pick the minimum value of, over this three value as the lower meaning. The maximum value over this three value as the upper limit. So we're using this new range, range and pick a random number within this range to replace to replace the old number. For example, here we we'll pick a random number number for set one and using this new number to replace this old number. The reason why we choose we're doing that is by doing so, the genetic algorithm can have high high uh, better searching performance and also we were using the existing knowledge for this parameter because we're just not using the original lower bound and upper bound we're using the existing uh, value as the new lower bound and upper bound so that the algorithm can have a higher chance to converge it to an to converge it to a stable value this is one of the, our innovative for this paper the third step is called uh, recombination or crossover. We will randomly pick two set. In this case here, we pick set two and set six. And for these two set, for these two parameter set, we will also pick one run, uh, pick one uh, parameter. In this case, we still pick the nth parameter. And then by using a random number, we will recalculate this parameter for these two set. In this example here, the random number is 0.5. That means we will just calculate the average number for these two for these two value, and using this new value to replace the old value for this parameter and for this for both set. This is called cross or crossover or recombination. Finally, we go to step four. In step four, we will recalculate the fitness function for all population. In previous three step. We have done the, uh, the done the mutation and recombination, and in after this after all this process, we calculate the fitness function for all of them. And in our case, if C three, which has never been touched before, has the best performance, we are using this C three as the initial point for deterministic algorithm. So overall, that means for population of a genetic algorithm. We, this population have six different parameter set, and we run the genetic algorithm. We get the best perform best performance parameter set, which is set three, and we're using this three this set three as the initial point for the local searching algorithm and try to find the uh, local optima. This is the overall uh, process for this for this uh, hybrid algorithm, and then. 
this is uh, this here shows the overall process for the algorithm. So if we finish step four, we go back to step one again and try to gener generate the new population uh, to generate new population again for the genetic algorithm. Here is the uh, formulation for the deterministic algorithm. As I mentioned before, we try to use in trust regions to reflect the algorithm. And here is the objective function for this for the trust region referred the algorithm. There are a couple of constraints here. The first is the calculation for system information, such as Jacobi matrix and Heisen matrix. And the second constraint here is the, the constraint for the updating step. Delta here represents the update 12 step for each parameter. The capital delta here represents the size of trust region. So this constraint here means the updating step for each parameter should lower than the trust region. D here is a skill factor for the updating step. C here is a uh, correction matrix for the Heisen matrix. But there, there are one problem for this problem formulation. As I mentioned before, the parameter for battery model or parameter for other application, they could have some upper limit or lower limit. But our formulation here only consider the limits for the trial step. We didn't consider the, the lower bound or upper bound after uh, when we update the parameter. Here is an example. Up, at, at, the top is, up, at the top, the slice is still the original uh, ultimate objective function for trust region. And here is an example for the nth parameter. It's pretty close to the upper limit. And we run this uh, trust region algorithm and we calculate the trial step for this for this parameter. And you can see this 12 step is also very close to the upper limit. And we apply this 12 step to the parameter. You can see after ending this 12 step to this parameter, the resulting update parameter is violating the upper limit. So that means this new parameter cannot be accepted by the, by the, by the model. In our case, it's battery model. So we designed two reflection schemes for this, for this situation. The first is, we were using the boundary value as the new value for this parameter. The second method is we're using a symmetric value as, uh, for the upper boundary as the new value for this parameter. In other case, if the update parameter is violating the lower boundary, we were using the lower boundary or the symmetric value of the lower boundary as the, as the new value for this parameter. This is what we call our algorithm as trust region reflecting method. By doing so, we can make sure the, the new parameter can be fit into the model. So here is also some uh, take home message. So by formulate the model parameterization method, uh, by formulate the model parameterization problem as a data driven problem, we can estimate the model parameter from the, uh, from the data, for example, such as from the field data or from the data sheet data. So now I will try to show some case study with my master. And because my research was focused on the battery, so I will show three cases for the battery. The first case was a benchmark case with no parameter. I will compare our algorithm with other algorithms to see the con uh, convergence B and the accuracy of the result. The second case is I will show some result for leasing my own battery cell with, uh, with data, data, which is could be fired online. And the third case where we show some result for legacy battery bank with film measurement. As I mentioned before, we collaborate with a company and they have a physical test bed so that we can have some fuel measurement. We tried using this fuel measurement and to tune our battery model. The first case is the benchmark, bench, uh, benchmark test. For this benchmark test, we got this battery model from MATLAB Simlink. And for this model, they have four different parameters. So we can know the true value of parameter. We also set up the search, the, the, the range of this parameter and lay our algorithm to search the true value within this range. For this, uh, for this benchmark test, we have designed some test current profile and for the, R, for the environmental temperature, we're just using a fixed number. This battery model can produce three output, which is voltage 
SOC and battery temperature. We're using these three, temp three profile as the target profile for our method. We compare our, our, our method with three other, uh, three other methods, which is summarized here. So you can see from these four figure, because we have four parameters, so we have four different figure here. The blue line represents our method. So you can see our blue, blue figure can always convert to the true value with lower, lower iteration number. So this, this means our algorithm can achieve better conversion speed and also can always achieve the accurate number. This table here summarizes the performance of different algorithms. You can see, as I mentioned before, our algorithm always need a fewer number and before you can reach the stable number. And for this first two method, they can always converge to the true value. So that the error here is zero. And other for the other two methods, one of them can now converge it to the internal impedance. So that we didn't consider these two methods in the future uh, future comparison. Fu Hong, can uh, yes. can you just uh, yes. repeat what those acronyms are for the methods on the previous slide? You mean this one? Yeah. So uh, GL. SEGA, that's the one that you're using, but then what are the others? Okay, so I just put the name of the algorithm here. So uh, I didn't put a reference here, but I uh, just put a name here. So if you can, uh, I think uh, you can find article based on the name here. So you can see in the literature, most of them are using particle, uh, particle swarming optimization method, but in our case, we're using genetic, method, genetic algorithm method. And so you mentioned that your particular method with the, uh, the genetic algorithm um, reaches a solution faster than the other and fewer iterations, but is it also just each iteration faster than some of the, the particle swarm methods? No, that's no guarantee. Uh, I mean, I can show you some information here. You can see this is our method compared to the other method, which is particle swarming. You can see in the very beginning, the particle swarming can achieve better performance, but after a couple iteration, my method is all performance in, and then can achieve better performance. So that means uh, ultimately the genetic algorithm could have a better performance for particle swarming, but for each iteration, it's just depending on depending on the algorithm setting and 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 the stochastic method. So it's not guaranteed. Sure, okay, cool, thank you. Thank you. So uh, let me just recap this part. So for this table, this table summarizes performance for our algorithm and other algorithm. The converging iteration represents the, the time you need until you can converge, but it's just a, uh, just kind of relatively time. It's not the true computational time. The true value means the, the final value represents the value this algorithm converging to. So you can see the first two algorithm, they always converge into the true value. So that they missed the error here is zero. But for the other two algorithm, they may just, they have deep, very small stable uh, errors. For the second case, we try to compare our method uh, we try to use compare our method with uh, particle swarming algorithm, and for this test case, we we try to uh, put, uh, we try to apply our method to lithium ion battery uh, battery cell, and we got this data from data sheet. It is a constant discharging test, and the discharging current is 32 amp. We also have the Arbin temperature data, so we have, our objective is still to minimize the uh, minimize the mismatch between the model output and simulation um, to between the simu uh, model output and the data sheet data. You can see from this three figure, this is the output for from our method, and that means uh, you can see the um, the model do very well, and the error between the simulation output and data sheet is pretty small. Here is um, a figure that shows the summation of the square error. The square error is defining here, and it's kind of like 
when we set all the weighting parameter as we when we set all the weighting factor as one, so we can get such summation for all the matching errors. You can see the original line is the particle swarming genetic uh, par particle swarming Gaussian Newton method, and the blue line is our method. In the very beginning, our method can reach can reduce the matching errors very quickly, and then there at uh, this uh, after after uh, 40 iteration, both messages reach a stable value, but our method can, can, can achieve lower matching errors compared to the other method. This figure here shows our method can achieve higher accuracy for the uh, for model, uh, model parameter estimation. Here is also a table summarize the performance for these two algorithms. For the first one column, uh, for the first one column, this one represents the uh, the square errors of the matching difference. So you can see our method can achieve lower matching errors. For this third case, we uh, so, uh, yes. Hey, before you go into this example, there's a question from the chat I want to ask you. Um, yes. How does this method account for the varying parameters of the battery as it ages? We didn't consider the age age here because now we because in the field we have the data here uh, because the data we have we have here we don't have any age data so we cannot till this we cannot consider the age impact into our model. So you've the, for this particular case, yes. but if your algorithm is relying on matching field data, then, I mean, you, you collect the field data, but then you would have to collect more field data to, to correlate as the battery ages, right? Yes, that means, for example, we may need to update the parameter every, maybe up every month. Because if we're using the battery frequently, the edge will can kind of will increase the parameter things. So that we need to update the parameter maybe every, every couple of times. That's one of the drawbacks for this method. Because it's a purely data-driven method. So if we have more data, we can have a better performance. And if the kind of like the chemistry change in the, inside the battery, we need to collect new data for this battery and using this method to estimate a new parameter again. It's possible. Uh, it's possible to consider the aging performance inside the model, but if we try to do that, we need to have a lot of data. Which, for example, we need to have one year data so that we can consider the aging in the parameter. Uh, as I showed you before, uh, the, as I showed you before, the model for the battery can be can we can consider the aging impact into this into the parameter here and if we have a long very long term data such as one year data we can capture such change inside this parameter but we don't have such long term data yet so that's why i didn't consider any agent any agent impact into the this model sure okay thank you And for our last case, we collect some data from the uh, actual fuel test, and this is for light acid battery. So we were using the uh, using the fuel measure low current and the arbitrary temperature as in from as an input for this battery model, and we try to compare the compare the uh, model output of battery voltage, SOC, and arbitrary temperature. You can see the voltage and the the matching for terminal voltage and best better SOC is pretty good because in our case we try to using this uh, we try to use our battery model for energy management system so the SOC estimation is really important for us and because we're doing hardware loop simulation the terminal voltage dynamics is really important for us for the temperature matching you can see the map the mass uh, the maximum matching error is around maybe three or three or four degree. In our case, we're only using this temperature as a protection. So that would just put a lower weighting factor for this prof profile. So that's why you can uh, have a larger errors. Here is again the, 
the summation uh, the, the summation for the square errors we can see in, as I showed before there's no guarantee in each iteration our method can our performance are the methods you can see here in the very beginning the orange line the orange line can achieve lower matching error but after couple iteration our method can achieve better performance compared to compared to the particle swarming Gauss and Newton. So and th again, this is a table summarize the performance of our tape our method and the particle swarming Gauss and Newton. So you can see our method is outperforming everywhere. And finally, and we just some take home message for this algorithm. So again, this algorithm is a hybrid algorithm so that you can kind of like balance the the trade-off between the searching efficiency and accuracy, and but also this method is a general method. It can apply to different uh, different models, such as generator model or battery inverter models. As long as we can calculate the system system Jacobi matrix and Hessian matrix, we can use this method to estimate the model parameter. And this is uh, finally I will summarize my approach. And um, so for my presentation. I just I just talk about our our uh, parameter uh, our model parameter estimation method, which is a hybrid hybrid method. This method can achieve good performance for battery model, and but if we have can, we can have accurate simulation. If we have accurate uh, simulation for battery model, so we can do better study for the microgrid uh, application or battery application. And we also have another paper which is using similar approach for the general for the generator model. And this paper have been submitted to actually transaction. In the future, we're also working on the model parameter. We're also working on the online parameter, uh, online parameter estimation using Jacobi matrix and Hessian matrix. But this will be our future work. And then Thank you all. I would like to thank you all again for being here. It's a really good, good, uh, great honor for me. And I also would like to thank you, Total SA from France, for their support for this work. And I also have some backup slides. The first one will be the equation for the electrical mean circuit. The second will be the equation for the thermal dynamic circuit. And the last one will be the process for the trust region algorithm. You can see they're pretty detailed, detail, but I didn't show in here. So if you got uh, if you are interested, I hope you I uh, um, welcome you to ask me a question or just download my paper. So now I'm happy to answer any question from you. Thank you. Thank you, Fuhong. We do have a couple of questions um, from the chat and I'm going to do my best to uh, ask these correctly. Um, this is kind of a, a, a two-parter. How is the electrical equivalent diagram incorporated with the generic battery model? Um, I think from the one of the earlier slides that you showed. This one, yeah. And so the the so the question is, how is that incorporated into the generic battery model? But then there's a second question. The generic battery model has predefined list of parameters, including internal resistance. Um, and so, how are the R and C components uh, computed from the internal resistance value of the generic model? So it's calculated for it's calculated it's similar to the case study one. For example, if we know the true value for the battery model, we will try to find this true value for the model. The first thing is this model is a general model. This model, I got this model from this paper, but this paper developed this model for large battery. So I just revised this model, revised this battery model so that it can fit with different battery model. And if we know, uh, we it's kind of like data-driven model. So if we know the true value for the parameter, and we will just put some random number into this into this parameter here, and then we will get the simulation output. We will, and and then uh, uh, and then we will, uh, for example for our method, we just put some random number for this parameter and put this parameter into battery model, and then we will calculate the mismatch between the actual number, the actual output from the target profile, and 
uh, from our simulation result, we can see the difference, and we're using this difference as the updating 12 step to update our model. So hopefully, you, after a couple iterations, we can find the true value for the genetic model, genetic battery model. Is there an answer to this question? I think. I think so. There is kind of a follow-up on how do you get the true value? Um, so for the true value, it's pretty tricky. So that's why I have different test case here. For the first case, it's a benchmark case. So that means we can know the true value, which is what it is. And for the second and the third case, we will define the true value as the parameter set who can minimize the mismatch of minimize the mismatch between the, between the field measurement and the simulation result. Because for the latency battery and the leasing mount battery here, it's a physical battery model. We don't know the internal impedance or the internal voltage source, because, right? So we just define the parameter set which can achieve a better performance as the true value. So this is one of our assumptions for, for this approach. Okay, good. Um, so here's a question on your uh, algorithm selection. When you make the comparison with other heuristic methods and especially PSO types, did you implement these algorithms for comparison? Um, and then what would be the theoretical comparison in terms of formulation that lead to uh, the outperformance of the genetic algorithm based that's proposed. And I think you showed that as part of your results. Mm, this question, uh, it's a good question, but it's hard to, hard to, uh, hard to, um, hard to answer. For both genetic algorithm and particle swarming, particle swarming optimization method, both of them are stochastic algorithm. That means they just need to changes, uh, randomly change some number, and hopefully they can achieve a good number. For particle swarming algorithm, they are true method to change the, uh, to change the, uh, to change the individual. I remember for this algorithm, the individual is a, is a particle, or is a kind of like a, a, a anything, or something like that. So you can, you can define the updating speed and updating Mm, direction so that you can get this new result from for particle swarming algorithm and the direction the change direction and change speed the change of direction and change of speed is stochastic is depending on stochastic number so that that means uh, as long as you, you can have a very larger size uh, of this particle or you can, or you can, if you have a really long iteration number, you can always achieve a better number. For my genetic algorithm, I just multi, well, I just modify the mutation scheme so that you can have a better chance for searching good performance. But anyway, from uh, mathematically, there's no, it's really hard to compare these two algorithm. We just play with different setting or different trip for this algorithm so that you can have better performance. It's also possible to, it's also possible to, uh, to apply this mutation scheme to the particle swarming algorithm. So, I mean, it's really hard to compare them. For the comparison in the case study, I just implement what it is in the paper. So there, so this is uh, from my paper here. I just implement what it is from this paper so that I can compare this, this. I can compare them with my approach. But for the comparison between genetic algorithm and particle swarming algorithm, I didn't do a lot for this part. Is the answer to this question, Ken? I think so, yeah. Um, and th the question came from uh, Arena at uh, Kaios. So Arena, if you could reply in the chat if you need more uh, details, um, or if that answers your question, let us know. And then um, uh, there was a question on the benchmark functions. How are those modeled in MATLAB? Mm. The reason why I picked this model is because it can produce 
the vote of him produce this three output, which is uh, which is aligned with our uh, our test case. So that's the main reason why I select this module. And then the other the other reason why I need to do this benchmark test is because we can know the true value for it, so that we can compare our algorithm with others. And this third value, the third reason for why we choose this battery model is. I think this is the only battery model we can. This is the only battery model we can find from Simlink, and you can. It also can provide some uh, detailed dynamics for the model. So that's why we choose this model. And this model you can find it from Simlink. Just searching battery, so you can find it. And did you? Um, so on your backup slides, do you have the equations for that case study? Uh, for this benchmark, we for this uh, benchmark battery model, we don't have any equation for this battery model here, because it's just a model from Simlink. So I didn't uh, put anything here. The okay. equation here is for our battery model. For example, for this one is for the electrical model. We have the equation for the internal voltage, impedance, uh, internal impedance, the dynamic circuit, the thermal resistance the internal heat loss and the terminal voltage and also the coolant counter for the SOC. The other one is for the thermodynamic circuit. Okay. Okay. Um, and there's a question on, uh, you know, if this is part of your uh, the PhD program. Um, and I answered yes, that this was part of your research. Uh, but you did more than just develop a battery model for your uh, dissertation, correct? Uh, yes. So uh, I didn't put a figure here. So, I mean, I tried to develop an architecture system for the whole power system by using HL simulation. And the device model will be the lower level for this system. You can see if, uh, uh, this is a figure here. So. The lower level will be device or, or, or components such as battery, inverter, uh, PV, and generator, something like that. And the first part for this component model will be the model parameter estimation. And the second part above this um, component model will be the system control algorithm. For my case, I, will, I have designed some microgrid energy management algorithm for it. And the third part over this microgrid level will be the distribution level. So we also developed some code simulation for, for microgrid and, uh, and distribution feeder. And the source level will be uh, the, the upper level, uh, the fourth level will be the feeder head, uh, will be the feeder level control algorithm. In, our, in my case, we have designed some uh, Volva control algorithm. So for my sisters, this is actually an architecture, architecture system and the uh, modeling for, micro, for batteries is just the lower part, uh, lowest level for for this architecture system. Okay, yeah, very good. Um, I mean, you you went through that pretty fast, but uh, and you make it sound easy. Um, <laughs> but I know that you know working on uh, yeah, all the development for a PhD is quite an undertaking. Um, so I'm assuming that this is a uh, uh, th th somebody who's either considering, uh, yeah, PhD or, you know, as an undergraduate, uh, wondering mm -hmm. about the level of effort. Um, but, um, yeah, so those are most of the questions, um, that we received and, uh, Fu Hong, you got several comments in the chat on, you know, thank you for your, uh, responses. So, you, um, yeah, I just want to, uh, you know, tell you that you did a great job and thank you for this presentation. Um, remind everybody as well that, um, you know, if there's more information that you'd like to know about Freedom's research, uh, there's a lot of information on our website. There's also a place where you can sign up for our uh, periodic newsletter. Um, Terry and I try to get one out uh, every couple of weeks or so. Um, just to provide a summary of the types of work that we're doing and uh, research results like this one. Um, so please visit uh, freedom.ncsu.edu and that's uh, freedom without the O. Um, great. Well, thank you all very much. And uh, like we said, Terry, you'll have this recording up.
uh, on the ECE website pretty soon. So if you do have any more questions.